Ran from Pan American Life Insurance Company. It's Varsity Quiz Bowl. And today, Andre Jacques, Wilson McLeod, Nadine Lowe, and Richard Pennock from Isidore Newman School will meet in a battle of quick recall. Laura Rigsby, Tommy Phillips, Darren Bland, and Paul Vaccaro from H.L. Bourgeois High School. The alternate from Newman is Quinn Hilliard, and the coach, Kenneth McKenzie. And the alternate from Bourgeois is Denise Chauvin, and the coach, Raphael Sondry. And now, here's our moderator, Mel Levitt. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, and welcome once again to the Varsity Quiz Bowl. We move now into the third round, which is a round of 16. And that's what it's down to at this point. Two fine clubs wait, waiting to play. Right now, before we start, however, let me introduce our judge. Today, it'll be Kevin Welch, who was formerly an employee here at WYES. We're very proud of Kevin. He's with Manned Flight Awareness with Martin Marietta. And you know what that means, with a big shoot coming off. Our scorer is Phyllis Hartley, Associate Director of Records at the University of New Orleans. Phyllis, nice to have you back. And our recognizer today is Jenny Lee, a radio personality here in New Orleans, uh, originally from New York City, but now an Orleanian. Let's have a round of uh, applause for them, all three. Okay, you're ready to go. I don't have to ask you, so let's begin with this face-off, and we're leading up to a land yap of 20 points. In mathematics, it's a graphic representation consisting of vertical rectangles whose widths correspond to a definite range of frequencies and whose heights correspond to the number of frequencies occurring within that range. For 10 points, what is this type of bar graph called? Can anyone particularize? Specifically, it is Panic what? Newman. Uh, bell curve? No. Bell. Good shot. Bourgeois, anyone want to take a... It's a histogram, histogram specifically. Another face-off. The patriarch of this family was Giovanni in the 14th and 15th centuries. His son Cosimo, a patron McLeod, of McLeod Newman. The Medici's? You're right. The De Medici family is the answer. And Newman's on the board now with 10 points and a chance to pick up 20 more. Newman, I'd like you to listen to the musical selection that we're going to play, and then I'm going to ask you some questions. So listen to this. Well, I can see that at least one of the panelists was moved by the music, whether they recognized it or not. <laughs> it's a tribute to the to the star. All right. These are the questions for five points apiece. First, who is the singer that you just heard? Pat Benatar. Correct. What's the name of the song? Treat Me Right. Treat me right. No, it's Hit Me With Your Best Shot. Oh. And what award did this vocalist just win recently? And in what category? Grammy. Uh, she won a Grammy as Best Female Vocalist. That is correct. And what specific category now? You have to be specific um, here. Best New Female Vocalist. No, it's in this case, artist. it was Best Female Rock Vocalist. However, you picked up two of the four, and that's ten more points for Isidore Newman. <laughs> Another face-off, we're going for a land yap at 20 now. The first two successful manned space flights were made 23 days apart in 1961 by Yuri Gagarin, a Russian cosmonaut, and Alan Shepard, the first American astronaut. The third flight was made in 1961 by another American astronaut who was killed Macara in a... Bourgeois. John Glenn? No, I'm afraid that's incorrect. We'll repeat for Newman, and in its entirety. No consultation now, you must ring. The first two successful manned space flights were made 23 days apart in 1961 by Yuri Gagarin, a Russian cosmonaut, and Alan Shepard, the first American astronaut. The third flight was made in 1961 by another American astronaut who was killed in a ground test in 1967. For 10 points, name him. It was Gus Grissom. Virgil Gus Grissom. Another face-off. This type of comedy developed from the broad force of the 16th century Italian Commedia dell'arte. The comic hero Harlequin would whack at the Stooges in the play with two pieces of wood joined together to make a slapping sound for 10 points. What do we call? Jacques Newman. Slapstick. Slapstick. That's where we got the title. <laughs> the very literal rendition of its original form. We have a lanyap of 20 points coming up, Newman. First off, for 10, name the 19th century poet from which the following lines are taken, and then for an additional 10, name the author of the poem. Poem and author. This is a quote. The curfew tolls the knell of parting day, and lowing herds wind slowly o'er the lee. 
the plow plowman homeward plods his weary way, leaving the world to darkness and to me. It's Elegy written on a country churchyard by Thomas Gray. You're correct in both counts. You got 20 points. Newman. <laughs> we have another face-off going for a landing up at 20 teams. For a quick 10, what football team has participated in four Super Bowl games? Phillips but Bourgeois. Has... Pittsburgh Steelers. No, I'm afraid that's incorrect. We'll repeat for Newman. For a quick 10, what football team has participated in four Super Bowl games but never won? Rick. McLeod Newman. Minnesota Vikings. Minnesota Vikings is correct. You've got 10 points. We have a landing up at 20. And again, it's sports. For five points each, name the professional teams which were known by the following nicknames. First, Murderers Row. What team? The New York Yankees in the 1930s. Uh, I think we'd have to extend it. Original Murderers Row was a 27, but it would be very hard to discount. They've been called the Murderers Row since then. You've got five. Gas House Gang. St. Louis Cardinals. Correct. Cardiac Kids. Um. Anybody? Last year, Cle Cleveland Browns. Okay. And the Monsters of the Midway. Monsters of the Midway. Chicago Browns. Browns. Bears. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm afraid we have to take your first answer, although I know what you meant. It was the Chicago Bears, but you picked up, what was it, two? Three. <laughs> We're going to have a mathematical struggle here. Anyhow, Newman, congratulations. <laughs> a little applause, please. Here we go with a face-off. We're going... Uh, we're going for a landing up at 20 points. The Turks were the last great empire builders of the Middle East. For 10 points, what was the name of the empire they built in the 14th and McLeod 15th? McLeod Newman. Ottoman Empire? Absolutely correct, for 10 points. It was the Ottoman. And I'm not sure. We have 10 points apiece on this one. This is uh, in the realm of space. The question is simply this. For 10 apiece, who are the two astronauts who will fly the space shuttle on April the 10th? Two men scheduled. On April the 11th, everybody will know their names. <laughs> so the long, long-standing Columbia program. The Robert Bob Crippen and John Young are scheduled to fly the Columbia. All right, we'll move on to another face-off. We're going for a up at 20 for 10 points. Give me the memorable year in which Joseph Stalin died. Queen Elizabeth II was crowned. Julius and Ethel Rosenberg were ex... 1953. Precise, that's right. 1953. <laughs> I was also going to add the Korean War ended in that year, too. The landing up at 20 points. I'm going to give you the name of a musical composition from each of the four different types of work, uh, each of four different types of work. And for five points each, you tell me the name of the composer. First, the musical Oliver. The composer was Lionel Bart. The opera Tosca. Verdi. Verdi. No, it was Puccini. Giacomo Puccini. The 1812 Overture. Tchaikovsky. Correct. And for another five, the musical tale for children, Peter and the Wolf. Prokofiev. Prokofiev. Correct again. You pick up ten points. Is it or Newman? <laughs> did I hear a buzz there? Buzz again if, you, if I did. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> That's for my delayed reception ears. Here's a rapid fire coming up. As you know, very quickly, in rapid fire, we ask the questions as quickly as they're answered. If you answer correctly, it's ten points. Incorrect answers are minus five, and we ask, only, we ask for only one answer per question, remember. You cannot delegate, or there is no referral, we should say, and it goes on for two minutes, and then the countdown ends, and the round will be over. Today's rapid-fire round concerns people, places, and things based on general knowledge. All of these answers should begin with the letter N. N. Ready? Let's go. The capital of Kenya. McLeod Newman. Nairobi. Correct. The first prime minister of India. McLeod Newman. Nehru. Correct. Commander-in-chief of the U.S. Pacific Fleet, World War II. Jock Newman. Nimitz. Correct. Another and more proper term for the new Stone Age. McLeod Newman. Neolithic Age. That is right. A French cathedral, a Midwestern university, and part of the title Lowe of a Newman. novel. Newman. Notre Dame. Correct. Fictional frontiersman, also called Hawkeye, Pathfinder, the Trapper, and Leather. Phillips Bourgeois. Natty Bumpo. That is correct. American temperance agitator, famous for her hatchet. Low Carry Newman. Nation. Correct. Originator of the game of basketball. Phillips Bourgeois. Dr. James Naismith. Correct. Capital of mainland China from 1927 to 49. McLeod Newman. Nanking. Right.
famous G-Man, leader of the Untouchables. Hello, Newman. Elliot Ness. Right. Term referring to any doctrine which, according to its critics, implies that nothing really exists. McLeod Newman. Nihilism. That's right. Famous female early film star for the Max Senate Studios. First name was Mabel. Last name was Normand. Famous gold mining town of the Seward Peninsula was Nome, Alaska. Male star of carnal knowledge, Chinatown and The Shining. Phillips Bourgeois. Nicholson. Correct. Swedish chemist who discovered dynamite. Low Newman. Oh, no. His name was Nobel. Final product of the oxidation of ammonia. Its chemical formula is HNO3. Rigsby Bourgeois. Nitric acid. That's right. English clergyman and author of the development of Christian doctrine. His name was Newman. President of the United Arab Republic from 1952 until 1970. McLeod Newman. NASA. Correct. Norwegian explorer of the Arctic. His name was Nansen. Capital of New Caledonia is Numia. Massachusetts Island and summer resort south of Cape... Macaro, bourgeois. Nantucket. Correct. Official United Nations name for Southwest Africa. McLeod Newman. Namibia. Correct. And there's the buzzer that ends the rapid fire. Okay. Well, we're going to pause here for just a moment, have a brief intermission, and then we'll be back to meet the uh, various players on the two teams and talk a bit about some of their pastimes and hobbies. Stay tuned. Archaeologists have long been fascinated with the ruins of Chaco Canyon, New Mexico, where a complex civilization flourished 900 years ago. New evidence reveals a sophisticated water control system and miles of prehistoric roads. Were these the keys to its survival? The Chaco Legacy on Odyssey. See it Saturday evening at 7 here on Channel 12. We'll continue playing the second half in just a moment. Right now, we're going to talk to the contestants in our game today. By the way, we're in the round of 16 now, I believe, and the survivors will move on to the quarterfinals and then up the ladder to the big championship game. Andre, before I ask you what you like to do, hobbies and pastimes, we must apologize. You all had the right title on the Pat Benatar <laughs> record. We played the wrong record and gave the wrong title. So much for that. Andre? Oh, well, I'm a member of the art club, and I, I really enjoy doing sculpture and painting, and my interest in that has led me to what I think I'm going to be when I grow up, which is an architect. And um, I play classical guitar, and I play varsity soccer, and I'm with the debate team, and I help Nadine on our literary magazine, The Pioneer. You have a remarkable variety of interests, young lady. Wilson? Um, I was editor of our school newspaper this past year. That's right. And uh, I'm on the forensics team, too. Um, I help Nadine and the Pioneer also, and uh, I'm a stamp collector. Very good. Well, you have some literary interests, among other things, many other things. Nadine, how about you? As you may have guessed, I edit the Pioneer, <laughs> which is our literary magazine. <laughs> um, I'm on the speech team, uh, art club, swim team, and I do a lot of photography after school. You've got a lot of interests, too, I tell you. Most of the people on this show, you notice, have a variety of interests, both physical and mental. How about you, Richard? Well, uh, I... I'm a member of the strategy club and the astronomy club at school, and uh, I play a lot of strategy games, and uh, I like computers and uh, electronics, and I also play fantasy role-playing games. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we don't have time to ask him what his latest fantasy role is, but I'll bet it's a Lulu. <laughs> Human! <laughs> All right. Bourgeois, same question. Hobbies, activities, correct, curricular activities or extra? Laura? I'm in the band. I play the flute. Um, I enjoy playing piano. I'm a student council secretary, and uh, I enjoy traveling and most sports. I, I sometimes wonder how they ever sleep, these young people, but they certainly enjoy themselves. Tommy, what about you? You're the captain? Well, this year I was um, secretary of the Key Club, editor of the school newspaper, and I'm interested in hunting, fishing, and I was statistician for the basketball team this year. Well, that's great. That's great. Very active man, too. How about you, Darren? Well, I was a member of student council. I was vice president of Key Club, a member of the National Honor Society, and one of the sports editors on the school newspaper. I enjoy riding motorbikes and playing all sports, too. When you get a chance to, <laughs> in between other things. Paul? Well, I was on the basketball and tennis teams, and I'm co-sports editor with Darren here on the newspaper staff. Yeah. Well, I know your school, your schools are proud of all of you, right? Those <laughs> are Good to have you with us. Let's continue playing now in the second half. Mm -hmm. 
Well, what an array of talent we have. We're ready to start now in the second half of play. And this is going to be a visual face-off team. So we're leading up to a land yap of 30 points. So I'd like you to direct your attention now to the monitors in front of you in the studio. And you will see a photograph of a woman who is featured on a Channel 12 special called The Originals, Women in Art. So for 10 points, can you name this famous... Jacques Newman. George O'Keefe. You're right, it is. George O'Keefe for 10 points. <laughs> Newman has 10 points and a chance to pick up 30 more. The country of Yugoslavia is composed of six republics, most of which have their own distinct customs and people. For five points each, name the six republics of Yugoslavia. Serbia, uh, Montenegro, and Dalmatia, and Galatia, Croatia. Okay, well, I, uh, unless that Serbia, last was a very... Serbia, Serbia, yeah. Serbia, Montenegro, Dalmatia, and... Uh, what was the last one? Galatia, and Croatia. Galatia and Croatia. Croatia, Serbia, and Montenegro are correct. The others uh, are Slovenia, Macedonia, and Bosnia-Herzegovina. Boy, <laughs> they get an award to pronounce the last name. 15 points. Have another face-off. We're going for a land yap at 20. Persian is not, is not an Arabic language. For 10 points, to what family of languages does Persian belong? McLeod Newman. Indo-European. That's correct, for 10 points. Here's a 20-point lanyap, Newman. You can earn five points apiece for completing the following famous pairs. Dido or Dido, D-I-D-O, and? Yes. Correct. Jupiter and? Juno. 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 Correct. Isolt or Isolde yes. and? Tristan. Correct. Messalina and? Yeah, but Claudius. Claudius. You've got them all. 20 points. <laughs> We have another face-off going for a land yap at 25 points. For 10 points, name the oil company that leads the latest list of the 10 largest American corporations ranked Macaro, in... Bourgeois. Exxon. Exxon's correct for 10 points. <laughs> ranked in terms of profits, it is the biggest. The land yap is for 25 points. And it's simply this, for five points each, Bourgeois, name the five elements that are known as the halogens or halogens. There are five in all. Total of 25 points. All right, Captain, we'll ask for one list, please. Chlorine, fluorine, bromine, iodine, and... and one more. Neon. Neon. <laughs> now, you got the first four, absolutely. The last one is astatine. Astatine, 20 points for H.L. Bourgeois. Here's another face-off going for a landing up at 25. The life-containing matter in a cell is protoplasm. For 10 points, what is the lifeless part called? The general term. Macaro bourgeois. Cytoplasm. No, afraid that's incorrect. Can you answer? Isidore Newman, anyone? It's metaplasm. Metaplasm. Another face-off. Although not an oil consortium, this organization was made up of 13 nations of the Middle East and lasted for more than 20 years. Its purpose is to encourage Arab nations to work together for defense, progress, and welfare. McLeod Newman. Arab League. Right. It's the Arab League. <laughs> we have a land yap of 25 points, Newman, for five apiece. Tell me the number. That's all you need to give. The number of the following amendments to the United States Constitution. We'll give you no leeway. It has to be exact. <laughs> All right, number one, the amendment that guarantees the right of trial by jury is what, specifically? Eighth Amendment? Mm, no, it's the sixth. sixth. Number two, the amendment that abolished slavery in the United States was what? Thirteenth Amendment. Correct. The amendment that gave women the right to vote. Seventeenth Amendment? Oh, uh, no, not quite. Nineteenth. Number four, the amendment that protects accused persons against excessive bails of fines and cruel and unusual punishment. Eighth Amendment? That's right. The Eighth Amendment it is. And finally, the amendment that authorized a federal tax on income. 17th Amendment. Mm, one off, it's the 16th. I believe we had two in that. Correct. That's 10 points for Isidore Newman. If you don't think that's a difficult question, try it <laughs> sometime. 
Face off, we're going for a lanyap at 20 points. He was born in 1757, an Englishman famous both as an artist and as a poet. Among his literary works are songs of innocence and songs of experience. Lowe Newman. Blake. That's correct. It's William Blake. Probably best known was his Tiger, Tiger, Burning Bright. We have a lanyap at 20 points. D-Day, the name given to the Allied invasion of Normandy on June 6, 1944, was one of the major turning points, of course, in World War II. For 10 points, tell me the code name. Code name for this operation. And for an additional five each, name any two of the five beach landing sites. Okay. There'll be a total of 10 points for those two, 10 more, 20 in all. Now, there was one, one code name it's become very famous in terms of... Okay, uh, the, the code name was Overlord, and one of the beaches was Oklahoma. All right, Overlord is correct. Oklahoma, I'm afraid, no, no is incorrect. Omaha and Utah oh, were the specific so. place names, and the other three were Sword, Gold, and Juno, the beach landing sites. But you get 10 points for Operation Overlord. <laughs> Here's a face-off going for a landing up at 20. This dynasty of China, founded by a former Buddhist monk, was an era when scholarship flourished, the novel and drama reached new heights, and its fine porcelain became renowned. Jack Newman. Ming. It was the Ming Dynasty. Yes, 10 points. The lanyap of 20 points, I'm going to give you a title, in each case, of a book. For five points apiece, you name the author. The first title is The Loved One. Who wrote it? Evelyn Waugh. Evelyn Waugh. Right. For five more, The Brethren. The Brethren. Um, Woodward and... Woodward and uh, Bernstein. Bernstein. Correct. A separate piece. A separate piece. John Knowles. Right. And finally, Roots. Alex Haley. You've got them all. 20 points. Is it on your <laughs> We have another face-off going for a land yap at 20 points, teams. The northernmost city in Alaska is the site of a naval Arctic research laboratory, and it's one of the places at which whale counts are made by the government and environmentalists during the annual migration through the Arctic Ocean. For 10 points, what's the name of this remote town? McLeod Newman. Town. Point Barrow? That's it. Point Barrow. <laughs> Sometimes simply called Barrow, Alaska. You have 10 points. Here's a land you have at 20 for five apiece. Supply the metric equivalent to the nearest whole number of the following measurements in the English system. Number one, 0.155 square inches. The metric equivalent, nearest whole number is? Square centimeter? Right. 1.196 square yards. Square meter. Square meter. Right. Three and a half ounces. Uh, gram. uh, 100 grams or 0.1 kilogram. And finally, 2.2 pounds. A kilogram. That's right, a kilogram or 100 grams. And you picked up three of the four 15 points. Human. Another face over. We're going for a landing up at 20 points. For a quick 10 points. Tell me, which Trojan hero of the Iliad was known as the Tamer of Horses? The Tamer of Horses. McLeod Newman. Achilles? No. Who's what? Anyone? It was Hector. Another face-off. In 1931, the first talking motion picture in England was made. The film was called Blackmail. Its director went on to become internationally famous. For 10 points, name this director who also directed such films as Frenzy, Marnie, and North by Northwest. The Cara Bourgeois. Hitchcock. That's correct. Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> Here's a landing up at 20. The modern Olympic Games were revived in Athens, Greece in 1896. With the exception of World War years, they've been held every four years since. The Games are especially noted for beautiful, even spectacular opening and closing ceremonies. For 10 points, name the country which always leads the opening procession. And for an additional 10, name the country that always brings up the rear. Greece at the beginning. Correct. And who always brings up the rear? Yes, yes. Well, ask for an answer. Taiwan. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's an inventive answer. I love it. Uh, actually, the twist is this. The host country will always bring up the rear. Greece does indeed lead it. You've got 10 more points. H.L. Bourgeois. Another face-off. We're going for a lanyap of 25 points. It's known as a complicated horizontal division of the social structure into groups. The members of which may neither the eat nor intermarry. Cast. Cast is right. The cast system. <laughs> All right, you got 10 points. Here's 25 more. A land yet for five apiece. Name the artist associated with the following works of art. The Last Judgment. The artist. Michelangelo. That's right, for five points. An American Gothic. American Grant Go Wood. That's right. Persistence of Memory. 
would undoubtedly help if you could see the picture. Da Vinci. Now, this is the one with the limp clock, I believe, but it's Salvador Dali. Guernica, or Guernica, or whatever. Degas? Uh, no, this is Picasso. And finally, arrangement in gray and black. Arrangement in gray and black. Whistler. That's right, you got three of them, 15 points. H.L. Bourgeois. Another face-off, we're going for a landing up at 30. It's a short musical composition for one or more soloists and an orchestra, usually with the chorus. It resembles an opera, but does not have the stage action that an opera has. It uh, is like an oratorio, but usually much shorter than an oratorio for 10 points. Can you identify? Phillips Bourgeois. Operetta? No, afraid not. Newman, anyone? It's called a cantata, cantata. Another face-off, more than 3,000 years ago, the Phoenicians lived in what is now an independent Arab nation. For 10 points, can you name it? McLeod Newman. Lebanon? That's right, it is. Lebanon. Pick up 10 points. We got a mystery question here, one of our clue-by-clue clue rundowns. If you answer it after one, you get 30 points. If it takes two, 20. 10 points, if it takes all three. First clue. It's a man. He was born in Posen, Germany, October 2nd, 1840. Gee whiz, now we'll never know, will we? That's the end of the game. Listen, this has been enjoyable. A lot of points scored. We're going to validate the final score, and then we'll announce our winner officially right after this. So stay tuned, won't you? Hi, I'm Bob Vila for this old house. Western Red Cedar shingles have arrived on the job, and it's time to get started on a south roof. We'll also install some new lightweight insulation on the inside walls, and Tom Worth, our landscape architect, reveals his plans for the land. Join me next time on This Old House. See it Sunday evening at 6.30 on Channel 12. And here's the official score. It's been validated and final. Isidore Newman, 370. H.L. Bourgeois, 115. Congratulations, Newman. You advance to the quarterfinals. One of the highest scoring teams of this particular year. Newman will go on to meet uh, the winner of the East Jefferson Hanville game in the quarterfinals. I hate to see all of you go, H.L. Bourgeois. You've been great competitors, Tommy and gang. Let's see, it's Laura, Tommy, Darren, Paul. I believe you're all seniors. Yes, sir. You won two impressive games, and we look forward to having your school back again. H.L. Bourgeois High School. Newman will return in May to play the winner of that game tomorrow between Hanville and EJ. And as of this point, there are now one of eight quarterfinalists left in our Quiz Bowl tournament. We hope to see you tomorrow for the game between East Jefferson and Hanville. See you then. The questions on Varsity Quiz Bowl are prepared and authenticated by the WIES editorial research staff and known only in advance to the quiz master, producer, judge, and researcher. All 64 schools participating in our year-long tournament are matched by blind draw. Selections of team members and methods of preparation are the sole responsibility of the schools and their coaches. The preceding program was made possible by a grant from Pan American Life Insurance Company.